Shah Tepe, a key archaeological site in northeastern Iran, was a significant settlement during the Bronze Age, reflecting the dynamic interplay of cultures in the region. The inhabitants of Shah Tepe were part of a larger network of early urban and rural societies, sharing similarities with the Bakshia Margian archaeological complex, abbreviated as BMAC, to the northeast. Architecturally, the inhabitants of Shah Tepe constructed rectangular, mud brick structures, sometimes arranged in clusters that hinted planned layouts. These buildings likely served as homes, storage facilities, or communal spaces. The use of mud brick is consistent with the broader Bronze Age architectural practices in the region, emphasizing practicality and available resources. Some larger structures may have had a ritual or administrative function, similarly to those found at BMAC sites, suggesting a shared or interconnected cultural framework. Shah Tepe's connections to the BMAC culture are evident in both material artifacts and shared practices. While Shah Tepe maintained its distinct identity, the presence of BMAC style items such as stone seals and ornamental objects implies trade or cultural diffusion. These connections place Shah Tepe within the broader sphere of interaction between Central and South Asia, illustrating its role as a cultural crossroads during the Bronze Age. Shah Tepe inhabitants in the Bronze Age, in particular those this video is about, closely resemble Bronze Age Central Asians and are, in fact, genetically indistinguishable from them. For this video, I gathered seven high-quality genomes from Sha Tepe dating to 32 to 31 centuries before the Common Era. I ran the DNA files from my trade predictor tool for DNA analysis, the purchase link for which will be in the description of the video. The most common predicted phenotypes were Litterid and East Alpinid, although Iranid, Stranded and Arabid phenotypes were also predicted. Here is a morph of the average predicted phenotype, all of these taken into account. Almost every sample was predicted to have brown eye color, with the exception of one sample, who had dark brown eye color. 5 out of 7 samples had black hair, and 2 samples had dark brown hair color. 5 out of samples had olive skin tone, and 2 samples had light brown skin tone. 5 out of 7 samples had straight hair, and 2 samples had wavy hair texture. 5 out of 7 samples had Greek nose shape, and 2 samples had snub nose shape. 5 out of 7 samples were predicted to have high odds of male pattern hair loss, and 2 samples had average odds of balding. 6 out of the 7 samples were predicted to be shorter than average in height, and 1 sample was predicted to be slightly taller than average. 4 of the 7 samples carried risk variants for hemoglobin E disease, 1 sample had high odds of kidney stones, and most samples had a low predisposition to migraine. One sample had a high predisposition to lupus, three samples had a low and one sample had a high predisposition to gout, and two samples had a low predisposition to eczema. Two samples had a low predisposition to polycystic ovary syndrome, one sample had high odds of age-related cataracts, and four out of seven samples had very high odds of age-related macular degeneration, suggesting a strong predisposition to this condition among this group. Two samples had high odds of myopia. The Shah Tepe group had an average overall predisposition to epilepsy. Every sample had an average predisposition to asthma. One sample had low odds of vitiligo. Two samples had low odds of corneal astigmatism. And four samples had high or very high odds of primary biliary cirrhosis. Two of the samples were predicted to be warriors, while four samples were warriors. It seems that as a group, the Shah Tepe samples had a predisposition to higher dopamine levels and worse stress tolerance. Three of the samples were predisposed to fewer D2 receptor sites, while one was predisposed to more D2 receptor sites. It seems that as a whole, the Shah Tepe samples were predisposed to no-go learning and lower odds of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. One of the samples had a high predisposition to Tourette's, two samples had a high predisposition to ADHD, one sample had a high predisposition to unipolar depression, and two samples had a high predisposition to bipolar disorder. Five samples had a high predisposition to autism, while two samples had intermediate odds of autism. Two samples from Shah Tepe were predisposed to lower levels of empathy, while one sample was predisposed to higher levels of empathy, on the basis of OXTR genotypes. Regarding athleticism, the X allele in ACTN3's R577X was just as common as the R allele in the Shah Tepe group, 
which is typical for Europeans and West Eurasians in general. In short, they had a typical level of athleticism for West Eurasians. Four of the samples had low odds of alcoholism, and one sample had very high odds of alcohol dependence. The shot epi samples had an average predisposition to epithelial cancer on the basis of 8q24 genotypes. The shot epi samples had a high predisposition to breast cancer, average predisposition to glioma or brain cancer, low predisposition to thyroid cancer, and low predisposition to testicular cancer compared to Europeans. Regarding blood cancers, they had a high predisposition to leukemia and average predisposition overall to polycythemia vera on the basis of JAK2 genotypes. The shot type samples had average odds of allergies, and all of them carried a multitude of risk variants for rare conditions, the most numerous of which were Parkinson's disease and beta thalassemia. The shot type samples had lower odds of autoimmune disease on the basis of HLA genotypes. Despite that, they had high odds for certain autoimmune conditions, like ankylosing spondylitis. One of the shot type samples had high odds of type 1 diabetes. Uh, none of the shot type samples carried HLA DRB1 risk variants for multiple sclerosis and two of the shot epi samples scored very high for rheumatoid arthritis risk. The shot epi samples had a high predisposition to lower homocysteine levels, with five samples scoring average and two samples scoring lower homocysteine levels, which is good. Three of the samples had low odds of ischemic stroke, three samples had high odds of atrial fibrillation, one sample had high odds of deep vein thrombosis, and one sample had high odds of generalized cardiovascular issues. All seven samples had average odds of obesity. Four samples had lower odds of type 2 diabetes, and two samples had high odds of type 2 diabetes. Four samples had low odds of Alzheimer's, and two samples had high odds of Alzheimer's. Almost all samples except one had lower than average red blood cell count. Five out of seven samples had longer than average telomeres, which leads to prolonged lifespan, which is good. And one sample possibly had hemochromatosis on the basis of her predicted iron levels. Most samples had high vitamin D levels, which is good, and 6 out of 7 samples had elevated levels of LDL cholesterol, which is bad for cardiovascular health. 3 samples had lower than average risk of syncope, while 4 samples had elevated risk of syncope. The most common blood type among the group was blood type A, which 3 people had, followed by blood type B, which 2 people had, followed by blood type AO and AB, each of which 1 person had. Thank you for watching this video until the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like and share if you did. Check the description for useful links. Goodbye.